that I described, where we go after these other countries. So, Chaffetz, you were shaking your head when Mr. Bremer was offering that. I, I, I'm assuming that you don't agree with that assessment. No, I don't agree. I think that going into a, a, Afghanistan is exactly the wrong thing to do. Afghanistan is a, is a sideshow. It's a remarkably difficult country to accomplish anything in. And it's a country which doesn't, uh, aside from providing a safe haven for the Taliban, for, uh, for bin Laden, doesn't really pose a, a major threat in itself. The real threats, America needs to go after the real threats. It can't pretend, I mean, it's been convenient up until now to play all sorts of games about what's dangerous and what isn't. The World Trade Center ought to tell everybody that it is too dangerous to allow rogue nations, whether it's Iran or Iraq or Syria or perhaps Libya or others, to have weapons of mass destruction because they will be used, not just by terrorists whom they harbor, but by, them, by, by the governments themselves. And just to pursue this, because we're down to the last couple of minutes, if we go to war with Iran, Iraq, Syria, maybe Libya, what is to prevent, it seems to me if there's one thing that will guarantee a terrorist with the capability to unleash germ warfare to do it, it's that. The, Should we win under those circumstances? The, the beginning of wisdom in this, in this conflict is to put aside past uh, conceptions and to understand that there's no need to be so pessimistic. If America could defeat Germany and Japan, it can defeat Syria and Iran. And if the Iranians and the Syrians or the Iraqis have weapons, better that, they, that, that whatever happens happens now and not three years from now. Right. Judith Miller, I want to give you the last word because you were shaking your head when, when Zev was. At least we didn't book a panel where everyone was agreeing. So let me, I'm going to ask you to, 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 to cap sure. this by answering the question that I asked uh, Mr. Bremer. How will we know when we've won? What does it mean to win? I think I have to agree with Jerry Bremer that it's uh, Paul, though, Paul we'll never be able to just declare victory, but I think you will see that there will be no more attacks like the attacks we've seen. And, you know, nobody's a, a soothsayer. We cannot uh, determine how this long struggle will come out, but I do know that it's going to be, a, I think, it's going to be a very long struggle indeed. Tough conversation for a Friday night, but this has not been the usual week we have been used to. Thanks very much to uh, my guest, Judith Miller of the New York Times, uh, Zev Chaffetz of the New York Daily News, and then Washington L. Paul Bremer, former ambassador at large for counterterrorism in the Reagan administration. And Mr. Bremer, uh, we hope that uh, the miracle can happen with your colleagues. Thank you for all for joining us. Aaron Brown, back to you. Jeff, thank you very much. Uh, to the bottom of the hour now, let's take a look quickly at some of the latest developments for those of you who may just be joining us. Some things have changed along the way as well. Searchers have found the cockpit voice recorder from the hijacked plane that crashed in Pennsylvania on Tuesday. Much information is possible there. Rescuers trying to reach the World Trade Center through a train tunnel that goes uh, under the uh, Hudson River from New Jersey were thwarted tonight when they found that the last 500 feet was flooded to the ceiling. They were hoping that there might be uh, some survivors in the train or in the tunnels on those uh, lower levels, but that is not to be. Two men said to have detailed knowledge of the terrorist network are taken to New York from Texas tonight. They were taken from an Amtrak train. They were armed with box cutters and without legal ID. And late tonight, the House of Representatives followed the Senate in passing a use of force resolution. It is a resolution that gives the president a green light to use military force to go after the terrorists, the masterminds, and those countries the president believes harbors them. One dissenting vote there. And observances of a National Day of Prayer and Remembrance continue tonight. Earlier, Many of the giant marquees along the Las Vegas Strip went dark in tribute to the victims of Tuesday's attack. We, um, I want to show you a couple things here. I'm sorry, they're just getting organized a bit. These are pictures we just got of the, <coughs> excuse me, Ground Zero area. This was shot by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, um, today. And you see the rescue workers moving in. I think as we, we get a little, there we go, we get a much better sense of uh, two things, it seems to me, the extent of the damage and the broadness of the damage as well. You also get a sense of the people who are working there, uh, the fatigue on their faces and the rest. These are pictures that were shot, as we say, by FEMA 
as FEMA officials toured uh, the area today. The, they came in around the time the president came in. Now a series of still pictures. This is in the moments after the first plane hit the first tower on Tuesday. These were taken in tower number one. As you see people coming down the stairwell trying to get out. Look at the, on the right side, the, uh, the woman's face, if you can see it. I think there's, is there one more in this sequence, David? Okay. Let's take a look. Again, these were shot shortly uh, after the plane hit on Tuesday in the first of the towers of the World Trade Center. We have, uh, I think, three or four more of those pictures at our website. You can go to our website at CNN. Dot com. Try and uh, help make people through this time of grief. As you know, Americans today, all over the country really came together, big cities, small cities, for a National Day of Prayer and Remembrance. National Correspondent Bruce Morton takes a look at all that was said and heard there. Church services everywhere. America's leadership was at Washington's National Cathedral, but services everywhere, Cleveland, Ohio. We mourn for the many lives lost in a tragedy that remains etched in our minds forever. Boston, Massachusetts. Look with compassion on the whole human family, and especially on those who lost their lives this week. Sweet hour of sweet hour. At the Pentagon, where many lost fellow workers and friends. May God come for all of you that are in loss today. And may we wait on him and renew our strength. Manchester, New Hampshire. An Islamic service in Sterling, Virginia, near Dallas Airport. When people yeah, they accuse you of being terrorists, this is because this is what, this is what they were told. Austin, Texas. Banish the violence that has been in our midst and the evil that exists around us. Back at Washington's National Cathedral, the Commander-in-Chief. This conflict was begun on the timing and terms of others. It will end in a way and at an hour of our choosing. That service ended with a hymn, a battle hymn. Bruce Morton, CNN, Washington. This tragedy has been, we suspect, especially difficult for the many millions of Arab Americans in the country. Uh, there has been a considerable amount of harassment of them. This is a very difficult time. They, too, in many places in the country, gathered to pray in this national day of mourning and remembrance. CNN's Richard Blystone uh, on the New York Muslim community now. A community rich in immigrants, sharing the time-honored aim of making it in America. Still on good terms with their old cultures. Still strong in their faith, Islam. Atlantic Avenue, they proudly say, is the oldest Arab community in New York. And as stunned as anyone by Tuesday's carnage. It's uh, shocking, it's uh, horrible, um, uh, you feel very bad, you know. What's different here is fear of taking the blame. All Arab American and Muslims in this country that resides and live and make their living in this country are as good as American as anyone else that came from all over the world and they love the American flag just like any pla anyone else and they have nothing to do against this country and this is one of the reasons we are living in this country. Nonetheless, Atlantic Avenue today is keeping a low profile, lest the rash of slurs and slights and insults get more serious. Ahmed Morsi is passing out a letter in Arabic from the New York District Attorney, 
telling Arabs and Muslims where to call if harassed or attacked, like his own mother on Tuesday. She was spit at, um, go back to your country, die, this and all these different slurs um, and different, um, you, know, uh, you know, my mother. Islam is a religion of tolerance, says the Imam Abdul Rahman Tafa, a religion that forbids ignorant wars between nations. Muslims from 22 nations come to pray here. We all feel the pain of what happens, says the Imam. And he asks, please give blood, money, whatever you can to help victims of the disaster. But if the attackers were Muslims pursuing what they saw as a holy war, did Islam attack America? Jihad is for defense and defense only, he says. And anyone who preaches otherwise doesn't know Islam. The Quran says if a man murders another human being, it is as though he killed all humanity. This Friday service ends with special prayers for all those who were killed, including at least 50 Muslims. Richard Blystone, CNN, Brooklyn, New York. One of the things that seems to be binding all Americans these days, no matter their backgrounds, in the aftermath of this tragedy is a renewed sense of patriotism. We came across a statistic today that uh, just since Tuesday, Kmart and Walmart, the two giant retailers, have sold about a half a million American flags. Obviously, many other flags have been uh, sold as well. It would seem that many people feel that there is no other place to turn, that the flag is the one thing that connects them all and makes them feel a little bit better in a very difficult time. Here's CNN's Ann McDermott. You might take this guy for a loony in better days, but these are days of rage. Our people, this is our people. This is our land. This is our way of life. And the people below are with him. And in a way, so is Arthur Jagel, who heard and saw things this week he could not take in. They were unbelievable. I thought that it was just a dream, but it wasn't. He is glad to know, though, that others are doing what he's doing this day, flying their flags. When they can find them, this man wanted a big one. Well, unfortunately, it's all they have left. But Rose Tibbs didn't care what kind of flag she got, too sad to care. You know, it just it breaks your heart. It breaks your heart to think that people have so much anger and hate in their hearts that they could do something like this. She took her flags back to work, handed them out to her office mates, and then they watched TV. A prayer service was on. People seem to want prayer these days, hoping perhaps that God will shed his grace on them. But America, meanwhile, is opening up its heart and wallet. These radio stations collected more than $100,000 for victim relief in just a couple of hours. And here, too, they show the colors. Something that perhaps seems trivial against a backdrop of so much suffering. But for Michael Maranga, it says what he feels. We're here and we're not going away. Ann McDermott, CNN, Los Angeles. This week that has been like no other is going to lead to a weekend that is going to be anything but usual as well. There are going to be no Major League Baseball games. All Major League Baseball games have been uh, canceled through the weekend. The National Football League has canceled its uh, games as well, so no games, no football on Sunday. And there will be only a few college games as well. The Emmy Awards uh, were scheduled for Sunday. They've been moved to next month. And the release of a number of movies has also been postponed for the weekend because they're pretty violent, and that seemed pretty inappropriate given all the violence that we've seen. CNN's Beth Nissen now on what New Yorkers are doing to try and escape, to try and escape this tragedy. For most New Yorkers, it doesn't seem much like the start of a weekend. Still, in a week when so many people who went to work on Tuesday never came home, it was good to see the work week end. Many headed out of town for hastily arranged family gatherings. Jason Spiewak was taking Amtrak to his parents' home in Pennsylvania. I've just been stirred up all week by the, you know, the goings-on, and I just want to be close to family and friends. 
Bree McCallop was going home to Florida. Um, I live by myself, and I, I really just don't want to be here right now. I just don't feel 